Hi, it's Mr. Polachek, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how a cell can be influenced by different types of solutions. Cells can increase in size, they can even decrease in size, depending upon the type of solution that surrounds them. We might be looking at a hypotonic solution, a hypertonic solution, or maybe even an isotonic solution. And this is going to help you with labs that we do in class, like the diffusion through a membrane lab, or some of the AP biology labs that we do. Uh, and I think the best way to start off is to talk about what a solution is. So a solution is made up of two things. One is the solvent. This is the thing that does the dissolving. And I think for almost all of the uh, solutions that we use in class, we're gonna be using water, a very versatile solvent. Uh, it dissolves a lot of things. Uh, and whenever we use water as the solvent, we say that the solution is an aqueous solution. Uh, the second thing that you're going to need to make a solution is something that will dissolve in the solvent, and that's called a solute. Now, that solute is going to be things like salt, it can be sucrose, it can be glucose, it could even be the lemonade mix that you um, scoop into the water and stir so that you could have a drink. All of those things dissolve in water, so they are solutes. Okay, so that's what a solution is. Now, what I want to uh, do here is uh, also show you a little bit. Uh, more complicated of, of a concept is this thing called the hydration shell. When we go and dissolve something like salt in water, it's going to break up. And salt is sodium chloride, and when it breaks up, it forms the individual ions, as you can see in the picture um, in the screen here. And now look very closely at the water molecules that are surrounding the yellow sodium or the green chlorine uh, ion. And there's something um, very interesting about the water molecule. Why don't you take a look at that? And maybe you remember from the lesson on um, properties of water. You know that water is a polar molecule. It has a charge. Do you see anything interesting about how they line up? Okay. Hopefully you can tell that if you look over at the uh, sodium in yellow, that the, the oxygens here uh, line up with all red. Uh, around the yellow, and that's because this oxygen end here has a negative charge, so opposites attract, and the water molecules are arranged this way, and that forms a hydration shell. This water is not available to move right now because it formed that hydration shell. Now look over at the chlorine. You can see that the water has rotated. Well, why? Chlorine is a negative ion, and the hydrogens have a positive charge, so you can see uh, how they arrange and they form, again, this is called a hydration shell, okay? And that's gonna be really important when we talk about water potential and why it's water that's moving and not the solute, okay? So that's a hydration shell. Now, the first type of solution that we wanna talk about is a hypotonic solution. A hypotonic solution uh, is one that contains a lower, a relatively lower amount of solute than maybe the cell. And you can see that with these purple dots here, uh, hypotonic. Now, here's how I try to remember it. Hypo means that the solution has a low amount of solute. And you can see that in the representation with the purple dots here. And wherever there's more solute, water wants to follow. And you can see clearly that this cell has many more purple dots, and so that water wants to move in to the cell, and that cell is going to get bigger in size. Okay. Now, again, the reason why is because water is forming hydration shells around every single one of these particles, Okay, and there are going to be more hydration shells formed inside the cell than outside, so there's more free water outside here in a hypotonic solution, and it runs in. So hypo solutions, hypotonic solutions, have a low amount of solute. Let's look at the next one. Here's a hypertonic solution. And I kind of emphasize that hyper because I like to remind kids that when, whenever we hear hyper, we think of like a lot. Like maybe someone is behaving you know, uh, in a way that they're hyper and you say, oh, they have a lot of energy. So I remember that hyper means a lot. Okay, so I'll write that up here. And again, we're referring to the amount of solute in the solution. And you can see outside the cell here, we have a lot of red particles or, or solute. And inside the cell, we don't have as much. Now, 
um, try to remember that simple little phrase here that wherever there's more solute, water will follow. So the water is going to run out of this cell and it is going to shrink in size. So that's a hypertonic solution. And the last one is called an isotonic solution. And I think this is the easiest one. An isotonic solution just means that the inside and the outside are both equal. And you can see that here, you have six particles on the outside and six particles on the inside. And there's going to be real no net change. You might get a water molecule moving in, uh, but then you're also going to have one moving out. And there's no net change in size. The cell doesn't get any bigger. The cell doesn't get any smaller. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look and see what happens uh, with real cells in different solutions. So let's look at an animal cell and a plant cell. And we're going to first put them in a situation where they're in a hypotonic solution. Now remember, hypo means low. That means the solution has a low amount of solute. So if I make these yellow dots, the solute out here, three particles, that means in here, there's going to be a lot more because a hypotonic solution has a low amount of solute. And remember my phrase, wherever there's more solute, water's going to follow, and that water's going to rush right in. That's going to make this cell um, lice. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the cell membrane's strong, but it's not that strong, and this cell will actually explode. Plant cells, same thing will happen. It's a hypotonic solution, so you have a low amount of solute out here. You have a high amount inside. The water is going to rush in, as you see here. And that cell is going to reach turgor pressure. And plants love this. This is a very happy plant cell because uh, that gives them the uh, support that they need to stand upright. Okay. Now let's jump over here to the other side and look at a hypertonic solution. Now a hypertonic solution, remember hyper meant a lot. Oh, sorry, that's not working. There we go. Okay, it means a lot of solute. And where uh, we can draw that in here, we can draw these yellow dots as the solute. We're going to put a lot on the outside, and we're going to put a few on the inside. And wherever there's more solute, water is going to follow. So that's going to make this cell shrivel up. Plant cells will do the same thing. Okay, It's a hypertonic solution, so there's a lot outside. There's few inside. The water leaves, and the inside of the cell um, shrinks. The outside doesn't change because that cell wall is just way too strong. And an isotonic, remember isotonic means that it's equal on the inside and outside, so you might get one molecule of water moving in, but you're also going to get one moving out, and there's no net change. And so that's what it looks like. Now I want to help out on one of the labs that we do in class by showing you um, what happens to a red onion cell and here's a, the image of that red onion cell. When you put it under the microscope, and you can see that the cells are completely filled with um, cytoplasm that's red. And what we will do is once we have it in view, and you've drawn what you had to draw, you're going to flush that slide with salt water. And I'm going to go ahead and, and play it here. Okay. And just keep an eye on those darker cells uh, up toward this, the higher part of the center of the screen there, and you should start to see them um, shrinking. Now, not the outside, the brick kind of structures. That's the cell wall. The inside red is going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, just keep an eye on it as the salt water is a hypertonic solution. It's causing the cytoplasm to lose that water. Okay, you can see it happening now toward the bottom of the cell. Okay, this is called plasmolysis. Okay, look at how the cell's cytoplasm is changing. It's becoming darker. It's collapsing in toward the center because the cytoplasm is losing water in a process known as plasmolysis. Okay, so that's something that you would see in your diffusion through a membrane lab. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so here we have three different beakers. And I want you to take a minute and see if you can figure out whether those beakers contain a hypertonic solution, an isotonic solution, or a hypotonic solution. Um, so go ahead and do that. You can pause the video here, and I'll go over it real quick. All right, so let's take a look. Now, I think that the one there's one that's really easy to identify, and I, I think it, 
it's the middle one here. Um, this this middle one, you can see the cell in yellow here. It's got three particles in it, but it's got a lot surrounding the outside, and that means this solution, because there's a lot more on the outside, this solution is a hypertonic solution. Okay, and hypertonic means that there's more on the outside than on the inside. And remember our little phrase, wherever there's more solute, water is going to follow. So water is going to go out of this cell, and this cell is going to shrink. So that's a hypertonic solution. Okay, now the other two are a little bit tricky. Um, let's go over here to this first cell in the, in the first beaker. And we see that we have a, a cell with, with a volume that is not as much as what's in the beaker. So there's more water in the beaker than there is in the cell. And you have three, you have three solute particles inside the cell, and you've got double the amount of water on the outside and double the amount of solute. So relatively, they are the same. Okay, if you look at the volumes, they're the same. And that means this is going to be isotonic. Okay, isotonic. And it's not really going to change in size. The last one over here, because we have double the amount of water, but the same amount of solute, there's actually more, um, there's more water on the outside here. So there, this is going to be called hypotonic. Okay, and the reason is because um, there's more water, there's more volume of water and less solute than what you would see here. So wherever there's more solute, water is going to follow, and it's going to run in, and this cell is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and if it's an animal cell, it could uh, lice or explode. Okay, so those are the answers for the three beakers there. And now one more trick for you. This is the original U-tube. It is a bent piece of glass tubing that has two different solutions on the sides, and it's separated by... Uh, a semi-permeable membrane, okay? And you can see that right down on the bottom here. And we will call this side A, and we will call this side B. Now, what do you think will happen to the levels on side A or the level on side B? Do you think that the level will rise? Do you think it will sink? What will happen? So why don't you go ahead and make a guess on which side, A or B, will increase in uh, height or decrease in height. All right. Now, the first thing we have to do in order to answer that question is to identify the types of solutions. And on this side, A, this one is going to be a hypertonic solution. This one is hypertonic. Okay. This one is got a lower amount relative to side A. Uh, this one is hypotonic. Okay, hypotonic. So um, wherever there's more solute, water is going to follow. So the water on side B is going to move over to side A. This water is going to come over here. It's going to make the level of uh, liquid on side A go up. And on side B, this should go down. Let's take a look, see if we got it right. And here you can see on the final state, we get it right. Okay, you can see that that change is H. And uh, here on the final state, this level on B did go down and A did go up. Okay, so that's it. I hope this helped and it helps your understanding of solutions, what a solvent is, what a solute is, and maybe this will help you uh, with some of the labs that deal with osmosis. Okay, and I will see you next time.